اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد respected elders brothers friends ladies young ones first of all we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all his blessing for giving us the tawfiq to participate in this real nice beautiful auspicious conference may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward the organizers for organizing it very nicely and reward all of you for coming down and participating mashallah you've been listening to some beautiful lectures May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to absorb all the beautiful words which have been said and give us tawfiq to practice on what has been said. My subject is to talk about the day of Qiyamah. Shaykh Ahmad Ali Sahab will be talking about the signs of Qiyamah. I have to talk about the day of Qiyamah. Day of Qiyamah is mentioned not only in the Quran, but also in the previous scriptures, in Torah, Sabur, Injil, every book of Allah talks about Imaniyat, Amantu Billahi, wa Malaikatihi, wa Kutubihi, wa Rusulihi, wal Yawmil Akhir. This was belief of every nation, every prophet, from Adam alayhi salam till Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So they all talk about the day of Qiyamah. However, the details given in Quran are just amazing. These details were not in the previous books. Quran is Quran. It's the word of Allah preserved in its original form since it was revealed upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala opens up the day of Qiyamah in Quran in many places. In one hadith, Rasul Paak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam named a few surahs and said, these surahs have turned my hair white, gray. Because they talk about the day of Qiyamah and the day of Qiyamah is really scary. Rasul Paak sallallahu alayhi wa was a very fearful person. So he said, after reading those ayat and the description of the day of Qiyamah, my hair have turned gray. <laughs> so Quran has described the day of Qiyamah very beautifully. Alhamdulillah, all of us sitting over here believe in the day of Qiyamah. The first page of Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah mentions, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ Allah mentions, وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُوْقِنُونَ Believers are those who believe in the akhirat and life after death as well. We all believe that we are accountable. We will be held to account in the court of Allah on the day of Qiyam. We have to stand before Allah. Allah himself will be questioning and he will be judging and he will, he will be addressing the whole creation. Everybody will be before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everybody has to come before Allah on the day of Qiyamah for Hisab, Kitab, Sawal, questioning, reckoning, Mizan, weighing on the scales, crossing the Pulstirat. These are some process which we have to go through and before we get to our final destination which will be Jannah inshallah. May Allah admit us all into Jannah al Firdaus. Before we get there we have to go through this procedure. <clears throat> we are in this temporary life. Allah Pak has given us this life. We thank Allah for creating us, for giving us this life. We thank Allah for Iman, Islam, Quran, Ihsan, Namaz, Roza, Zakat, Hajj, Ibadat, Tawfiq, Ability, Dindari. We thank Allah for the internal blessings and the external blessings which we can see, which we can't see. We are grateful to Allah for all His ni'mats and all His blessings and bounties. We should always lower our head due to gratitude in front of shukr in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When this life comes to an end, we go down under into the grave, wherever our grave Allah Pak has kept. We stay in the grave for a certain amount of time. There is some questioning in the grave as well. Munkar Nakir, Sawal Jawab. And the grave is either a garden from the gardens of Jannah. This is for the believer. Or 
a pit from the pits of Jahannam. This is for the Mujrims and the criminals. So it's like a guest house or a remand center. Thereafter, when the trumpet is blown, everybody will come out of the Qabr. Everybody will come out of the Qabr. Wherever their Qabr was, they will come out of their Qabrs. In the manner in which they come out, came out of the, from, the, from the wombs of their mothers. Allah will bring them out. Allah can create, Allah can recreate. It's easy peasy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Park will recreate the whole creation to the extent that our fingertips, our DNA, our blood group will be same. Exactly the same body which we had in this dunya, Allah will recreate it and we will come out of our qabr. The first to come out of the qabr will be the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With him will be Sayyiduna Abu Bakr, Sayyiduna Umar and Sayyiduna Isa ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salam and they will proceed and move, wait for the people of Jannatul Baqi. They will all come out and wait for the people of Jannatul Ma'la in Makkah Mukarrama. And then together with all of those hundreds and thousands of people, our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will move forward towards Maidan Hashar. And wherever whoever is will be resurrected and we will have to go from wherever we were buried. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will join the earths together the oceans will be removed because on the first trumpet the oceans will have perished so the land and the earth will be joined combined allah will spread it out and the maidani hashar is where baytul maqdis al ardul muqaddasah is and in that area some narrations we hear maidani arafat they are both close together allah will stretch it and millions and billions and trillions of human beings will be uh, arriving over there we will go, have to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when everybody is gathered everybody is standing over there the sun will be brought and the sun will be very close and the heat will be intense people will be sweating and drowning in their perspirations according to the sins which they had committed some people's Sweat will be up to the ankles, others up to the knees, others up to the hips, others will be, will be drowning and it will be up to their earlobes. And this will be something amazing, it's against norm, khariqi adat, and things on that day will be against the norms. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do this however he wants and people according to their crimes and uh, jurms will be standing and everybody is standing. However, there will be some fortunate people who will be given special shade by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Anbiya, Awliya, Sulaha, and among with some categories which Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned. Sabatun yuzilluhumullahu fi zillihi, yawma la zilla illa zilluhu. May Allah make us among them. May Allah give us that special air conditioned, cool shade on the day of Qiyamah. A just Imam, a youth, who grew up in the worship of Allah, a person whose heart is attached to the masjid. When he comes out of the masjid, he worries about the next salah to get to the masjid. Two people who loved one another just for the sake of Allah, not for any other worldly gain. A person who was lured into sin by a beautiful, pretty girl, wealthy. There was no reason to stop him from sin, but he said, Inni Allah, and turned away. He will be called and given the special shade on that day of Qiyamah. A person who spent with, in, in such, with such sincerity and secrecy that the left hand does not know what the right hand gave. Today there is craze going on about ice bucket challenge. This is something for show and name and fame. If you want to give, give in such a manner that the left hand doesn't know what the right hand has given. A person who remembered Allah and tears came out of his eyes due to the fear of Allah. Just one tear, just one tear trickled down his cheek. This person will also be called into the shade by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there will be some categories. rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned some other categories as well. In another hadith he said, 
He said, Rajulun alim, haythu tawajjaha alimu an Allah ma'ahu. A person who has Allah at the back of his mind. And wherever he goes, he knows, he realizes that Allah is with me. He has this istihzar of Allah. Allah is always watching me. Allah is with me. Allah is looking at me. Allah is looking at my every move. Allah is listening to my every word. Allah is hearing everything I say. Allah's watchful eyes are over me. He has this realization at the back of his mind all the time. This person will also be called into that shade. In another hadith, Rasulullah Pak sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned that lady who was very nice to her husband will also be called in that shade. That son who was very kind to his parents will also be called into that shade. May Allah include us among these categories. Other than these, the criminals, the mujrims, the tyrants, the zalims, the khabis, the ziddi, fasadi, anari, stubborn, stiff-necked, proudy, haughty, arrogant, Stupid idiots. <laughs> I don't want to say the BAS word. Toba toba astaghfirullah. All these will be standing over there in that sweat. And stand in there for ages. And remember, there will be no sofas, no chairs, no place to sit on the day of Qiyamah. Standing. Sheikh Suleiman. I was speaking, standing up. They asked me, Mulanasa, will you stand up? I said, no, but I can't stand up. I'm going to sit down. My legs are already shaking because of the crowd. I'm so much, under so much pressure. On the day of Qiyamah, we will be standing before Allah. This this is why day of Qiyamah is called Qiyamah. لا أقسم بيوم القيامة ويوم القيامة ترى الذين كذبوا على الله وجوههم مسودة أليس في جهنم مثوى للمتكبرين يوم القيامة standing everybody standing can't sit down standing before Allah and then there is the waiting game everybody is waiting 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 how long some asar say this waiting will be for 40 years. And Lama Suyuti has mentioned in Al Budurus Safira, Fi Ahwal Il Mauta wa Umur Il Akhira, that this waiting will be for 300 years. Standing, waiting, waiting. Everybody is terrified, scared. Then some people will realize that how long are we going to stand here? Let's, you know. Do something, make some movements that we can start Hisab Kitab, ask Allah Baq. Now, we don't have the guts to go to Allah and say, please Allah start Hisab Kitab. So we will have to go through someone. So they will say, Adam alayhi salam is Abu al-Bashar. So we will request him and people will go to Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam. Now, the Mujrims and the criminals are in their terrible state. Only those who will have their hosh hawas, the pious people, the ulama sulaha, they will go. Some people say everybody will go, but Allama Suyuti has mentioned that those who will have their hosh hawas, their senses, it is they who will be inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that go and try and do something to start Hisab Kitab. So the hadith shafaat comes into contention over here that they will go to Adam alayhi salam. He will say, sorry, I can't do it. And the words he will use will be, Inna Rabbi qad ghadib al-yawma ghadaban, lam yaghdab qablahu mislahu, wa lan yaghdab ba'dahu mislahu, nafsi, nafsi, izhabu ila ghayri, izhabu ila nuhin, awwalu rasoolin ba'athahu Allahu ila ahli al-ard. My Rabb is so angry today, he has called everyone to account in his court, for asking and questioning, he is really angry today because of the state of the criminals. And I am scared. I also made a mistake. I ate from the tree which I should not have eaten. What if I go and Allah rebukes me? Who are you to come and ask me to Hisab Kitab? Go away from here. What will I say? I don't have the courage to go to Allah. Go to Nuh salam. He is the first Rasul to be sent to the creation. People will go to Nuh alayhi salam. He will say, sorry, not my, I can't do it. 
I also made one mistake. I asked Allah for something which I shouldn't have asked. When, was, when my son was drowning, I said, In Nabni min ahli, Allah was angry. Innahu laysa min ahlik, innahu amalun ghayru salih. Fala tasalni ma laysa lagawhi ilm. Inni a'izu kan takuna min al jahileen. I can't go. Go to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam will say, I am sorry. I made a mistake. I spoke, I said something which I shouldn't have said three times. So I am scared Allah might say that you made a mistake over there. How, how dare you come to me? Not my job. Go to Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam will say, I struck one blow and killed that person. It was a mistake. But what if Allah holds me to account for that? I can't do it. Go to Isa alayhi salam. Isa alayhi salam will say, how can I go? My community took me as Rabb. They used to worship me. They took me as God. If Allah gets angry upon me, what will I say? Go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdun ghafar Allahu lahu ma taqaddama min zambihi wa ma taakhara. It is his duty, he will fulfill it. Allah has forgiven him. Allah gave him in this dunya the parwana and the certificate. Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina. Liyaghfira laka Allahu ma taqaddama min zambika wa ma taakhara. Wa yutimma ni'matahu alayka. Wa yahdiyaka siratan mustaqeema. Wa yansuraka Allahu nasran aziza. Go to him, he will do. People will go to Rasulullah Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he will say, ana laha, ana laha. This is my duty. This is my job. Allah has reserved it for me. I will do it. Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will move forward, proceed. Allah will send Jibreel alayhi salam down with Burak. He will write on the Burak, as Shah Rafir al-Din Sahib writes in Qiyamat Nama. And he will go to a special place which Allah will have reserved for him. And he will fall into sajda. And he will perform a very long sajda in which he will praise Allah. And he will praise and praise and praise. He will praise Allah in such a manner that nobody among the creation has ever praised Allah in, with those words. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will become happy. And he will say, Ya Muhammad, irfa' ra'sak. Wa sal tu'ta. Wa qul yusma' lak. Muhammad, raise your head. Say, you will be heard. Ask, you will be given. Intercede, your intercession will be accepted. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will raise his head and he will say, Parvat Degar, please start his Hesam Kitab. Parvat Degar will say, okay. He will say, and Parvat Degar, please take special care of my ummah. Think about my ummah. Forgive my ummah. Have mercy upon my ummah. Allahu Akbar. He won't forget us there as well. He will make special dua for you and me. Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal will say, okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him some, in the hadith, some special guidelines with regards to whom he can take from the right gate of Jannah without hisab kitab. And some guidance will be given. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will come back to the people of Maidan Hashar, say hisab kitab is now about to start. This the, the heavens, the skies will tear open, split apart. وَيَوْمَ تَشَقَّقُ السَّمَاءُ بِالْغَمَامِ وَنُزِّلَ الْمَلَائِكَةُ تَنْزِيلًا الْمُلْكُ يَوْمَئِذٍ الْحَقُّ لِلرَّحْمَانِ وَكَانَ يَوْمًا عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ عَسِيرًا The heavens will split open and the malaika, those who were busy in worshipping Allah on the first heaven will descend. And they will surround the maidan e hashar People will see so much noor and light. And they will hear the tasbih and tahleel of those worshipping angels. They will ask, is our Rabb coming? Is he here? They will say, no, this noor is not the noor of our Rabb. Our Rabb is pak and pure and holy from these types of things. We are his angels and malaika. Thereafter, the second heaven will open up. And all the angels will come down. Then the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. All seven heavens angels will come and surround the Maidan Yashar. So all people are surrounded inside. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's special tajalli will take place. Allah's arsh will be carried by eight malaika who are huge, massive. Rasulullah described them in one hadith. They will be carrying the arsh of Allah. وَيَحْمِلُ عَرْشَ رَبِّكَ فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ ثَمَانِيَةٍ يَوْمَئِذٍ تُعْرَضُونَ لَا تَخْفَى مِنْكُمْ خَافِيَةٍ Allah has tajalli in a manner which befits Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is pure and holy from naql-e-makani, 
from movements. This tajalli will be how it fits Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows best. We can't put it into description. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's tajalli will take place. And then the procedures of the maidan e hashar will take place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make an announcement. لِتَتَّبِعَ كُلُّ أُمَّةٍ مَا كَانَتْ تَعْبُدٍ Every ummah should follow whom they used to worship. So those who used to worship the sun will follow the sun, the moon, the moon, the stars, the stars, the idols, the idols, whatever. And they will follow the statues, statues, and they will follow and they will be taken towards one side and towards the fire of Jahannam. Now this ummah will remain. And they will be standing, waiting. Some munafiqs and hypocrites will try to hide, but they will not be able to hide. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, now start hisab kitab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order that every person's a'mal nama and books of deed should be presented to him so he can have a look at it. One hadith Suyuti narrates that the A'mal Nama and the Sahifas are kept under the Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, under the instruction of Allah, every person's Sahifa and his book will be, will fly and they will tatayr al suhuf. They will, they will be sent down, they will be, and, and they will come in front of each person. For a pious person, it will be on his right side. For a, a, another, the others, they, it will be on their left. And they will be told, read your books, look at your aman nama. Iqra' kitabak, kafa bi nafsika al-yawma alayka hasiba. Wa'uridu ala rabbika saffa. Laqad ji'tumuna kama khalaqnakum awwala marrah. Bal za'amtum allan naj'ala lakum maw'ida. Wa wudhi'a al-kitab. فترى المجرمين مشفقين مما فيه ويقولون يا ويلتنا ما لهذا الكتاب لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أحصاها ووجدوا ما عملوا حاضرا ولا يظلم ربك أحدا This is your book, it's not anybody else's book. You wrote your own book. During your life for 40, 50, 60 years, you were writing your own book. We had placed one angel on your right, on your left, and they were noting everything down. It's your book, read it. And when a person reads, he looks at it, he will say, Oh, this is my deeds, it's not me, it's somebody else's. No, no, it's yours. It's yours. When they go through their book, after that, there will be questioning. Questioning, whosoever's hisab and questioning is made easy, then the rest of the procedures will be easy for him as well. But whosoever's hisab is problematic, then he will have problem in the following stages as well. Mannuqishal hisab yahlak. Once Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his salah made dua, Allahumma hasibni hisab an yasira. Oh Allah, make my hisab easy. Aisha radiallahu anha asked, Ya Rasulullah, what is easy hisab? And he said, easy hisab is that the, the malaika who are, who are taking account flick through his books and they say, okay, go. But if someone is pinpointed somewhere and asks, why did you do this? Then he's gone. He's gone. May Allah make our hisab easy for us. During this period, we will have to stand before Allah as well. Have direct conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For a mu'min, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put a screen. And only Allah and the mu'min. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remind him of his life and ask him, is this your sin? Is this your sin? Is this your mistake? God, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. I admit my guilt. He will be scared that I'm doomed now. I'm destined for Jahannam. Allah Pak will say, my my, my banda, my slave, I concealed your sins in the dunya and today I forgive you. Go. So this sattari and sitr and concealing is also a great ni'mat of Allah. Today, we ourselves bring our sins into open. We tell people, I sinned last night. I did this and I did that. Whereas we should be concealed. Allah Park is concealing them for us. Why should we tell people? 
We should, we should realize that a sin is a sin. And we should try and repent rather than boasting over our sins. Allah will say, look, I kept your sins closed and hidden. Today I forgive you. There will be others, the munafiks and the mujrims and criminals who will be called in front of Ru'usul Ashhad, the whole creation. And Allah will say, Ha'ula illazina kazabu ala rabbihim. Ala la'natullahi ala zalimin. These are the ones who used to fabricate lies upon Allah. May the curse of Allah be upon the zalims. And they will be moved away to one side. Allah will show no mercy to them. The criminals, they will be presented to Allah in an ajeeb manner. Mutakabbirin, the Firauns and the Hamans and the Namruds and the Qaruns and the Shaddads and the Zalimin of yesterday and of today who are oppressing and committing zulm upon zulm upon zulm, bombing upon bombing, they will be standing before Allah. And not only before Allah, the whole creation, whoever they had oppressed, they will be trampling over them and beating them up with their feet and uh, they will be showing their anger and frustration over them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be really angry with them and upon them will be the wrath of Allah. Allah will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put them to a side. And he will say, وَمْتَازُ الْيَوْمَ أَيُّهَا الْمُجْرِمُونَ Criminals, stand on one side. Don't come here in front of me. أَلَمَا عَدِ إِلَيْكُمْ يَا بَنِي آدَمْ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُبِينٌ وَأَنِعْ بُدُونِي هَذَا صِرَاطٌ مُسْتَقِيمٌ وَلَقَدْ أَضَلَّ مِنْكُمْ جِبِلًا Take, take them away from here. They will be taken to fire of Jahannam. May Allah protect us. When this questioning is taking place, may Allah be merciful to us. You know, sometimes in this dunya, Allah Park shows the day of Qiyamah to people. Ibn Abid Dunya narrates in Kitabul Manamat, this Shaykh says, I saw a dream one night. Maidan Hashar has taken place. People are being presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I am also wandering around looking here and there. Suddenly the malaika are dragging a semi-naked young girl. And she is screaming. And I see that she has no headgear. Her libas is ajeeb, semi-naked. And she is screaming and the malaika are dragging. And she is presented in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, oh, oh, oh. He says, in the dream I saw that Allah turned his face away. And Allah said, oh, 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 kisko ke le? Le jau, isko mein. Le jau. And Allah said, the reason for that, kanat mutabarrijatan bizinatiha. She used to display her beauty in front of people. For that sin, I don't want to take any other hisab kitab, throw her into jannah. He said, I was really scared, shaking. It was my turn to be presented to Allah and I was scared. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, take him to Jannah because he used to come for Juma Salah very early. And I am happy with him because of his respect for Salatul Juma. Take him to Jannah. Allah shows this. Our Ustad Muhtaram Hazrat Maulana Bilal Sahab long time ago saw this dream. Maidan Hashar has taken place, people are being presented. Hazrat Shaykh al Hadith, Mawlana Muhammad Zakariya rahmatullahi alayhi, is presented to Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, In go jannat me le jao, ye to bakshi bakshahe hai. And Mawlana Bilal sahab says, I also move forward. And Allah pak said, Chalo in go me le jao. So we have to be presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our meeting with Allah. This Hisab Kitab questioning, the Hadith says, a person's feet will not move from their place, places on the day of Qiyamah until he answers four questions, his life. We gave him this ni'mat of life, how you used your life. And your youth, where did you spend your youth? Now think carefully, youth is included in the life. 
But there is a special question about youth because the best portion of your life is your youth. Because when you grow old, everybody gets to be in their hands. Because we know our feet are in the grave now, so we have to behave. If a person doesn't behave in his old age, then he's a really stupid person. So your main part of your life is your youth. This is why Allah will question you about your youth. And your wealth from where you earned it and where you spent it. Every penny's hisab will be taken. How you earned it and how you spent it. Two questions. Not just how you earned it, halal haram, but also how you spend it. So be careful where you get your money from and be careful where you spend it because you have to give an account of every pound and every penny. And your knowledge. How much ilm you acquired, from where you acquired, and how much you practiced on your knowledge. The yellow card, red card? Yellow card. Bas udar bhi to yellow card hai ya do minute reh gayi hai. Abhi to bahut bayan baki hai. Lekin chalo, I try to summarize as much as I could. Hisab kitab will take place, questioning. After questioning, then people have to move towards mizan, weighing on the scale. Your amal nama are in your hands now and you've been asked certain questions. Now you have to go to weigh. This is the procedure to decide, determine on which place you're going. So every hasana, every hasana, every good deed, every namaz, every qulhuwallah, every subhanallah, alhamdulillah, every la ilaha illallah, every astaghfirullah, every pound and penny you spend in the path of Allah, every amr bil ma'roof nahi anil munkar, will be placed on one side of the scale and every sayyah, every bad deed and sin will be on the other side. And the scale is huge. If seven heavens and earth are to be put in one side, then it has space for everything. So this a'mal will be placed on the scales and those whose good deeds are more and sins are less, they will be given a certificate of jannat. And those whose sins are more and good deeds are less, they will have to go to Jahannam. Now, whose a'mal will be weighed? People will be of three types. Number one, those fortunate souls, the anbiya, salaha, awliyaullah, who don't have any sins upon them, they don't need to be weighed in the scales. So they will be fast tracked towards Jannat. And number two, those kuffars, mushriks, deniers, rejecters, disbelievers who had no uh, virtue, good deeds, values, they don't need to be weighed, they will be sent to Jahannam. And as for those who have both types, who have iman as well, amal saliha and sayyah, they will be weighed in the scales. And for them, some will have to go towards Jahannam, may Allah protect us, and others will be allowed into Jannah after the certificate is given. There will be some who will be on Al-A'raf, in the middle of Jannat and Jahannam. And if one Niki is given to them, their hasanat are more outweigh the sayyat, Jannat. Or if one Niki is taken away and the sayyat outweigh, they have to go to Jahannam. This person will go around, be allowed to go and get one Niki if he can find it. He will go. His father will see him coming, his brother, his mother, his wife will see and they will turn away and run away. يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ مْرِيمْ مِنْهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ شَأْنُنْ يَوْنِ He will say, sorry, my hisab kitab is left and my wazan is left, my weighing is left. What if I need that single naki as well? I'm not giving you a single naki. So on that day, every man for himself, every woman for herself, nobody will help anyone. We will all be concerned about ourselves. And then after weighing on the scales, the amal nama certificates are given, we will have to cross Pul Sirat. And Pul Sirat is very long because Jahannam is very big. So Pul Sirat will be very long as well. It is sharper than a sword and thinner than a hair. And those who have good deeds and the certificate in their right hands, they will cross it very swiftly and get to the other side and wait. For Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam arrives, he will take everybody towards Jannah. 
he will be the first to knock on the gates of Jannah and Ridwan will ask who is this he will say it's Muhammad and his Ummah and Ridwan will say yes Bika umirtu an la aftaha li ahadin qablak I was instructed not to open Jannah for anyone before you and your Ummah you are here now Jannah is open for you inna al Jannah hurrimat ala al anbiya hatta adkhulaha wa inna al Jannah hurrimat ala al umam hatta tadkhulaha ummati and the gates will be open and everybody will go direct to his own Jannah he won't make mistake of going into someone else's place like when you go from this conference to your home he will go to your home not anybody else's similarly you will go to your jannah because allah will have shown you your jannah in your qabr in your grave every day morning and evening allah would have shown you your jannah so you will go directly to your jannah and we will go into our jannahs inshallah there are some more things in between hawze kawsar shafaat no time for all that may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make that day of standing easy for us may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make that pre presentation into the court of allah easy for us you know sometimes people say don't judge me who are you to judge me allah is going to judge me we shouldn't say such sentences you know baba toba toba astaghfirullah we should be scared no allah is going to of course allah is going to judge me but we should be scared we don't know what's going to happen on that day we could, could slip with one mistake Allah could be angered. You know, read the hadith of that lady who didn't feed the cat and she was sent into Jahannam. Allah was angry because she didn't look after the pet properly. So if you made some slight mistake, Allah was angry with you for that. Allah can ab abolish all your hasanat and send you into Jahannam straight away. Allah can hold you for a kabira and for a sagira. So don't take Yawmul Qiyamah lightly. At the court of Allah, imagine you are over here in this dunya in a court. And high court, supreme court, that is the judge. And there are the witnesses and the solicitors, barristers. Over there, there will be no solicitors, no barristers, no lawyers. You will be for yourself. And the, the, there will be people, claimants against you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will listen to all those claims. Then Allah will judge you. So that standing before Allah is like a court. There will be witnesses, statements, and co arguments, counter arguments. Even the prophets will be told to bring forward their proofs. And Nuh alayhi salam's ummah will say he never came to us. And Allah will bring, say, oh Nuh, bring your proof. And Allah, oh, Nuh alayhi salam will put forward Rasul Paak sallallahu alayhi salam and ummah e Muhammadiyah. And we will see Allah send down Quran to us in which there was Surah Nuh and he did his tabliq, he did his job. Then Nuh alayhi salam will be said, yes, a hujjat, an argument has been proved. Now the ummah will will be de dealt in the manner they deserve. So in the court of Allah, there is justice. There is so much justice that justice will be done between two, 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 two goats. One had uh, horns, the other didn't. And the amount of uh, abuse and uh, you know hitting it had done in this dunya, uh, it will be uh, reversed. And th that uh, goat will hit this goat. And then both will be said, Kunu Turaba. And this is only for insaf and show the justice of Allah. Allah is just, Allah is fair, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deal with everyone just, justly and fairly. So we have to be scared of that standing in front of Allah and never make such remarks. Always keep that standing before Allah in front of your eyes throughout your whole life. Never forget your death. Never forget your standing before Allah on the day of Qiyamah. Never forget the questioning. Never forget the horror and the terror of the day of Qiyamah. When if a person has 70 prophets, amal saliha, even then he will be scared on that day as well. So may Allah make that day easy for us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admit us all into Jannah. Jazakumullah wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi jma'in bi rahmatika ar-Murahim.